If you've been watching the Muslim rallies against Israel recently, you've probably heard the popular chant, Khaybar Khaybar Ya Yahud, Jaish Mohammed Sayahud, which means, Khaybar Khaybar, O oh Jews, the army of Muhammad will return. It's meant as a threat to Jews that what happened at the Battle of Khaybar will soon happen again. Muslims who chant Khaybar Khaybar Ya Yahud apparently don't know much about the Battle of Khaybar. They might have a vague notion that it was some sort of military victory over a Jewish community, but if Muslims actually knew what happened at Khaybar, I don't think they would ever bring it up as a threat. It was, after all, the most embarrassing event in Islamic history, and in the next few minutes, you'll understand why. Khaybar is an oasis in Arabia, a little north of Medina, and in the 7th century there was an important Jewish settlement there. One day, as Jewish farmers were heading to the field to tend their date palms, Muhammad's army rushed in and attacked. Muslims killed those who tried to defend themselves, they seized the settlement, and they took the women captive as sex slaves. Some of the Jews who surrendered were allowed to remain on the land as dhimmis, subjugated people who are required to acknowledge their inferior status by paying jizya, tribute money. The Jews who remained in Khaybar had to give 50% of their annual crops to Muslims. After the battle, Muhammad learned that a man named Kanana knew where some money was hidden, so he ordered his followers to torture the man until he revealed the location of the money. They lit a fire on Kanana's chest and eventually killed him. Kanana had a new bride named Sophia. When the sex slaves were divided up, Sophia was chosen by a Muslim named Diha. But Muhammad heard about how beautiful she was, so he decided to marry her. Let's read about what happened when Muhammad took Sophia to his tent to have sex with her. While the Prophet was lying with Sophia, Abu Ayyub stayed the night at his door. When he saw the Prophet in the morning, he said, Allahu Akbar! He had a sword with him. He said to the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, this young woman had just been married, and you killed her father, her brother, and her husband, so I did not trust her not to harm you. The Prophet laughed and said, Good. Abu Ayyub was smart, wasn't he? Muhammad, you just killed this woman's father, brother, and husband. I was worried that she might try to kill you, so I stood guard all night. Smart. Smart. Abu Ayyub was definitely smarter than Muhammad. Why do I say that? Well, after the Battle of Khaybar, a Jewish woman offered to cook dinner for Muhammad and some of his companions. The woman had almost the same story as Sophia. Her father, uncle, and husband had all been killed by Muslims. And Muhammad, genius that he was, happily accepted her generous offer of a hot meal, apparently oblivious to the age-old adage, never let a woman cook dinner for you if you've just slaughtered her family and violently subjugated her people. That one went right over Muhammad's head, so he sat down for dinner with his companions. Here's what happened, according to Sunan Abu Dawud 4498. A Jewess presented Muhammad at Kaibar a roasted sheep which she had poisoned. The Apostle of Allah ate of it, and the people also ate. He then said, Lift your hands from eating, for it has informed me that it is poisoned. Bishr died. So he, the Prophet, sent for the Jewess and said to her, What motivated you to do the work you have done? She said, If you were a prophet, it would not harm you. But if you were a king, I would rid the people from you. The Apostle of Allah then ordered regarding her, and she was killed. So the woman poisoned Muhammad and his companions. Bishr died, but Muhammad survived because he spit the food out when he realized it was poison. Now, pop history quiz for all my Muslim friends out there. How did Muhammad die? You may have heard that three years or so after the Battle of Khaybar, he got sick. In fact, he got so sick, his companions had to drag him around with his feet dangling behind him like weekend at Bernie's. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2588. Aisha said, when the Prophet became sick and his condition became serious, he requested his wives to allow him to be treated in my house, and they allowed him. He came out leaning on two men while his feet were dragging on the ground. Muhammad was in such agony that Aisha could say years later that she had never seen anyone experience that much pain. Sunan ibn Majah, 1622. Aisha said, I never saw anyone suffer more pain than the Messenger of Allah. So, what was the sickness? Pneumonia? Cancer? Bird flu? What was it? Your Prophet told us exactly what it was. Sahih al-Bukhari, 4428. The Prophet, in his ailment in which he died, used to say, O oh Aisha, 
I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaibar, and at this time, I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. What killed Muhammad? According to the man himself, it was the poison he swallowed at Khaibar. You see, if you swallow enough poison, it will kill you immediately. But if you don't swallow quite enough to kill you, it might nevertheless do some internal damage. You could be in constant pain for years before you actually die from the complications. That's what happened to Muhammad. Not according to me, according to your prophet. Poison didn't kill him quickly like it did with Bishr. It did something much worse to Muhammad. It left him in agony for three years until he died, wallowing in freakish misery, all because he attacked Khaibar. And what happened after he died? Since he was in too much pain to appoint a clear successor, Muslims started fighting over who should lead. Here we are, nearly 14 centuries later, and Sunnis and Shias are still butchering each other. They're blowing up each other's mosques. Why? Because of the Sunni-Shia split. Why was there a Sunni-Shia split? Because Muhammad died in early death. Why did Muhammad die in early death? Because he attacked Kaibar. Was it worth it? Muhammad conquered the Jews of Kaibar, but who really won that battle? How many Muslims have died because of that battle? You lost your prophet because of that battle. The Muslim community still hasn't recovered from that battle. I'm bringing this up because, my Muslim friends, when you say, Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yahud, you're saying something much more important than you realize. Jesus, whom you regard as a prophet, said, He who lives by the sword will die by the sword. If violence is your only way of dealing with your frustrations, that doesn't just affect the people you're attacking, it affects you and your family and your community as well, because people are eventually going to respond with violence. Groups like Hamas know this. They want the violent response. They hide behind Muslim children in order to get the Muslim children killed. And for what purpose? Social media campaign against Israel? A Muslim child's life to Hamas is less valuable than a tweet. Absolutely sickening. But most of you Muslims out there are better than that. You're better than Hamas. I'll be honest, you're better than your prophet, much better than your prophet. You may believe that you have to condemn Jews just because Muhammad did, but you don't. God gave you the ability to think, my friends. Instead of mindlessly imitating your prophet, you can learn from what happened to him. When Muhammad moved to Medina, the people of Mecca were happy that he was gone. Muhammad could have lived the rest of his life in peace. Instead, he chose to attack the Meccan caravans. He chose to live by the sword. And this eventually led to war. The wars never stopped for him after that. And they haven't stopped since. Your prophet's most enduring legacy is death. Fourteen centuries of Muslim killing Kafir, Kafir killing Muslim, Muslim killing Muslim. Muhammad is a wonderful example for all of us, not of how to live, but of how not to live. He's the anti-prophet. I invite all of you Muslims out there not to follow him down the path of violence and to leave Israel alone so that children in Gaza and the West Bank can grow up knowing that they are more than shields for terrorists. But for those of you who want to continue the cycle of bloodshed, for those of you who won't be satisfied until Israel is reduced to a pile of rubble, all I can say is, remember Khaibar. Your prophet himself couldn't escape the consequences of his killings. Khaibar, Khaibar, ya Muslimin, Halak Muhammad, Dayakin.